Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the E-Rena. It's the final game here on the second day of the 12th annual Okawa Classic. Thanks for tuning in wherever you may be tuning in from. I'm Noah Alvarez, joined by Albert Robles on today's broadcast, and we're very excited to be bringing you a bonus game. A little bonus basketball here tonight, Noah, and it's an exciting one. You know, two of the top-ranked teams in the state in the form of the Butte Roadrunners yeah, it's a real and treat the Pirates of OCC. It's a real treat for us. It's a real treat for you as the listener. A lot of things had to be done last minute, but we were able to make it work. Shout out to Sterwin D. Haynes, who was on the last broadcast and who was able to kind of finalize what we needed to get in order. But yes, two top ranked teams in the latest 3C2A poll. Butte College was ranked number one and Orange Coast was ranked number three. We might see the Pirates fall because they did lose to Moore Park College last night by a score of 51 to 50. However, Moore Park was ranked number six, so if they do fall, I don't think it'll be too far. But it'll be Butte versus Orange Coast. And winning the tip is Orange Coast. Madeline Bassett wins the tip for the Pirates. Now the Pirates play a very strong defense as you see the first three-pointer hoisted up by Jordan Ariola. Yeah, so the Pirates see getting things rolling right away. Wasting no time as it's a steal by McIntyre, and McIntyre converts. The Pirates play a very aggressive defense, and they're going to have that extra motivation after losing to Moore Park last night. Butte coming from the Chico area, if you're familiar with Northern California region. As we'll get you the five on the floor after this layup attempt is good. Five on the floor for the Pirates. Ashari Cassell, Bridget McIntyre, Alyssa Dreesen, Sabrina Lopez, and Jordan Ariola. Ashari Cassell now passes it to McIntyre. McIntyre wearing number 10. Lopez takes the long two. Her foot was on the line. And it's Dreesen coming down with the putback as she skied over her defender and gets an easy two for the Pirates. Seven to two is the score. The Pirates are the home team. Just under nine minutes left to go in the opening quarter. They broke the full court trap and streaking for the layup was Sarah Tate. Sarah Tate is on the floor with Campbell Vig, Madeline Bassett, Jocelyn Medina, and Morgan Trigario. Again, welcome everybody to the broadcast. We know we probably have some listeners from further out out in the Chico area, listening to the Butte College team as they play here against Orange Coast. They get it down low, long step through, and I believe it was one too many steps. That's one a travel. One too many steps. Like, and it would have been a smooth basket had that actually gone in. But, you know, it is important to actually take a dribble every couple <laughs> of steps. So that was Lopez who was hit with the traveling. Orange Coast led by fifth-year head coach Sammy Doucette. It's another layup opportunity. Hitting the deck hard was Ariola, and the foul will be on her. So she prevented Tate from getting the easy bucket. And you probably hear Tyler Newton over the microphone a little bit as he's the seventh year head coach at Butte College. This is a rematch of the state finals last year. So if you recall in the 3C28 finals last season, it was Butte College who defeated Palomar who we saw last night in the semifinals. And they met Orange Coast. Butte College defeated, or excuse me, fell to Orange Coast. So Orange Coast is the reigning 3C2A championship at this level. While Butte College, their only loss last year, they finished with a record of 31 and one. But that one loss in the championship game to Orange Coast. So they definitely have some extra motivation tonight. Both teams carrying a little bit of a chip on their shoulder, I guess you could say. As they get it down low to Lopez, she's double team. Skies over Tate, and she gets the two off the glass. Nine to six is the score. Ball rolls over. Quick reactions there. Great save <laughs> by Noah Alvarez I think on we the got that. You can see that on the replay. That's cool. Yeah, a little bit. <laughs> and it'll be Tyler Newton who takes the first timeout of the evening. Orange Coast has a 9-6 to six lead over Butte College. A reminder, you are tuned into Orange Coast basketball here on SportsnetUSA.net. Or... What's the tagline on that? Sure. Uh, <laughs> well, like, I, I, it's like you're tuned into the Okoa Classic. Yes. Okay, good one. Good at save. Monterey Park here on SportsnetUSA.net. Yes, we're here on the campus of ELAC, yeah. which is in the city of Monterey Park. 
It's the Okawa Classic, and during this timeout uh, break. Because we are not officially the voices of OCC basketball, nor Butte basketball. Correct. But we are excited to be covering, you know, two powerhouse teams Although if Butte, in this great showcase that is women's basketball. If Butte was willing to fly me up there every weekend or so for a game, I wouldn't mind doing it. Yeah. <laughs> take, take a little trip north of Sacktown. Yes, sir. So for those who are new to the Okawa Classic, both Dan and Susan Okawa are former employees here at ELAC, and they're both big supporters of the program, as here's a wide open three for Butte. And it's Jocelyn Medina who knocks it in. But yes, both Dan and Susan Okawa, both, I think Dan was here earlier today. I don't know if Susan was here in attendance, but it's a tradition they've been doing here in between Christmas and New Year's. Lopez hesitates on the three-pointer, and I don't know why as she buries that one from the top of the arc. 12 to nine as the teams trade three-pointers. Here's more of that full court trap by the Orange Coast Pirates. It's Tregario who picks up her dribble. Butte moves the ball very well. Driving to the lane is Tate, and it's a nice reverse off the glass. Good use of the spin there as they trail now 12 to 11. A very fast paced game we're seeing here. Yeah, a foul point game has turned into a one point game, but just under seven minutes to go here in the first quarter. Now McIntyre has it, she's a sophomore for this Pirates offense as this one's tipped out of bounds, I believe on Cassell, and it'll stay a Butte ball. Butte in their black uniforms with the gold lettering and numbers. Orange Coast in their white uniforms with the blue trim and the navy blue lettering and numbers. 6.45 left to go here in the first quarter. Again, thanks for tuning in to the Okawa Classic here on SportsnetUSA.net. They get it ahead to Medina. Medina tries to get past Dreesen. There's a strong move, not able to capitalize. However, she will go to the line for two shots. As Coach Newton talking to Madeline Bassett here near us on the sideline. Both these coaches have different styles. Kind of saw this last night too as Moore Park played Orange Coast. And we just got done broadcasting Moore Park. They're led by head coach Kenny Plummer. And he has a very expressive personality, very hyperactive on the sidelines. But if you see Sammy Doucette on the sidelines, very calm, very collective. Sometimes her hands in the pockets. She always has nice kicks on too. That's one thing I've noticed in the different tournaments over the years. But Tyler Newton, a very animated guy, kind of like Coach Plummer from Moore Park as it brings it back to a one point lead now for Butte after the two for two free throw trip. Cassell drives, takes a mid range jumper and she gets the bunny to go. And a real quick note, you can very much see those uh, sequence kicks right on the camera right now. And hard to miss. Very beautiful, very beautiful work here by our Albert Robles as they get it ahead to Medina. She drops it off for Tate. Beautiful nice. bounce pass on the inside lane there. That's what you execute that three-man weave in practice all week long for. As now Doucette relaying to her point guard what the play call will be. Cassell drew some contact, now gets the put back on the left side. So nice job of her to stay with it after the initial block and she will go to the line for a three-point opportunity. As a team, the Pirates shoot 65% from the line as Cassell is able to knock down and capitalize on the three-point opportunity. Back to a two-point lead for the Pirates. Already seeing a lot of lead changes. This game has the intensity of a postseason game as Butte drives the ball, now dishes. They have numbers. This one's poked off, and I believe that was off. No, they're going to rule that off a Pirate player. Cassell got the hands in there. Campbell Vig who will inbound the ball underneath her basket on the right side. Gets it out to Tregario. Gets a screen by Bassett. Tregario now driving right past McIntyre. Good consistency and persistency there. All tied up at 17 apiece. Just over five minutes here in the first quarter. Again, you're tuning into the Okawa Classic 
here on SportsNetUSA.net. McIntyre dishes it open to a wide open Areola. Hits nothing. Ahead of the fast break is Trigario. Trigario jump stops, gets her defender to float past her, and that's an easy two for Butte. And a great presence and awareness here to kind of slow things up, knowing the defender's right behind you. This way that ball doesn't get smacked right out of your hand. Stays with it. Little extra delay. Puts her right back in for an easy bucket. We're seeing some high-level basketball here as Cassell is as both defenders were sealing her off from right and left. Looked like it could have also been a jump ball opportunity. Substitution to tell you about as it'll be McKenna Ching checking in for Orange Coast College. Still the same five on the floor for Butte. The Roadrunners making the trip down south for this tournament as Ching gets blown past and it's a blown layup by the Roadrunners. Now McIntyre pushing the tempo, gets it to Lopez, takes the bump on the left side. And I believe that's going to be out of bounds on the Pirates, so it'll remain Roadrunner ball. Again, two top programs here in the state of California. Very excited to be broadcasting this game for you at home, wherever you may be tuning in from, or if you're tuning in to the replay. Couldn't catch it live as now Vig gets a screen from Bassett. Now they swing it over to Medina. Medina trying to get something going. Vig has it with Ching on her. That's a mismatch, and she blows past Ching for the layup on the right side. Twenty-one to seventeen is the score. Butte has a five-point lead over the Pirates. Looks like the Roadrunners are in a zone. McIntyre dumps it off for Lopez, who overran the ball just by a smidge. Recovers, gets it to Ching. Ching drives right, too strong on her attempt. Lopez is right there with the left hand, is too strong. And McIntyre and Bassett get tied up. There'll be a new shot clock for the Pirates. Substitution to tell you about. As number 30, India Pines will come into the game for the Roadrunners as well as Giselle Rodriguez will come into the game. So it's Aubrey Prunty, Giselle Rodriguez, Jocelyn Medina, and Sarah Tate on the floor for the Roadrunners. McIntyre's three is no good. Big hit the deck hard. Ahead of the pack is, as she used a nice spin move and pivot there, good move by Reagan Moroccan. However, she's unable to convert on the layup. Just over three minutes left to go here in the first quarter. Yeah, two second chances and no points for Butte. Leaves a nice little opening for OCC to kind of come back in this a little bit. McIntyre dumps it off for Ching. She tries to kick it out, and Cassell gets tripped up. They're going to call a foul on Marroquin. Another substitution as it'll be Morgan Trigario checking back into the game, this time for Campbell Vig. As both the teams take a timeout, it's a timeout by Orange Coast as Sammy Doucette wants to talk things over. 2.49 left to go here in the first quarter. Reminder, you are watching the Okawa Classic, the 12th annual Okawa Classic here on SportsNetUSA.net. I'm Noah Alvarez, joined by Albert Robles. Thanks for tuning in wherever you may be tuning in from. Butte enters tonight with a record of 17-1. Orange Coast with a record of 10-2. Both teams ranked in the top five of the latest 3C2A rankings. And we could see why early on, very high-level basketball we're seeing on the court. Yeah, a little low scoring so far here in this first quarter at least on Butte's end, because like yesterday during the game I was watching, they had 35 points alone already in the first quarter. So a little bit slow here today, but you can take that into account just between the really two good defenses that both these teams are able to play. Yesterday it was Butte who played San Bernardino Valley as there was a trap in the corner. Good defense there by Butte results in a turnover. Three on two fast break opportunity for Campbell Vig, and she gets the layup on the left side. That was Aubrey Prunty, excuse me. But Speaking yeah. of Vig, I, I, I do expect you can hear, uh, anticipate to hear her name called quite a bit in tonight's game. She was very active in yesterday's win versus SBBC. She's like 
you know, one of the smaller players for Butte, but she is an absolute dynamo on the field. Wearing number five as she checks back into the game. They defeated San Bernardino Valley yesterday by a score of 97 to 40. Here you see Vig using her speed. She gets a nice screen by Bassett. Try to dump it off, and there's a fight for the loose ball between Ching and Vig. Possession arrow in favor of the Roadrunners. For the substitution, Maya Collins coming in for Orange Coast. 5'11 forward from Cypress High School. They get it to Trigario in the corner. She slashes down the lane and gets the layup to go. So it's an 8-0 run here by the Butte Roadrunners. Things were all tied up at 17 apiece just about two and a half minutes ago. As Lopez tries to set a screen for Cassell. Looks like the zone is giving the Pirates plenty of fits. Lopez gets it down low, spins to her left. Turnaround is good. Nice friendly bounce there. They get it ahead again, breaking this full court trap. It looked like the Pirates weren't ready as it's an easy layup for Prunty, getting it over Maya Collins. Back to an eight point lead, 27 to 19 is the score. Lopez drives baseline. A little short on her runner. Here's Ching with the layup. Now gets it out to McIntyre. McIntyre's three pointer is no good. And Great ball movement there by OCC to try and attempt some second chance points, but unable to get that last shot off. Mariquin going coast to coast. Her runner ends up short. Now Cassell steps through to the left side, and they're going to call a blocking foul, I believe, on Madeline Bassett. And yeah, Bassett just wasn't quite set to draw the charge, so moving screen equals a blocking foul equals a chance for the Pirates to put some points on the board. And a chance for not only us, but the players on the court to catch a breather. They're going fast pace. Hard to keep up with these things here. There, as there has been some very little stops in this game so far. And just the thing, too, we were probably given about, what, 35, 40 minutes notice that we were broadcasting this game during our previous game between ELAC and Moore Park. So, yeah, so we're still barely kind of catching our breath. Yes. Well, actually, like I, I'm fresh to go. I didn't, do <laughs> I, didn't know, I didn't do a whole lot of talking last game. Yeah, I was going to. Sirwin's office, the bathroom, had to make a couple other stops too. Get some tacos. Get some tacos, name pronunciations. All kinds of things as Cassell is two for two on the trip. The sophomore, excuse me, freshman from Orange Lutheran High School will take a seat. Lopez is on the floor with Haley Estrada who's just checking in, along with Jordan Ariola, Bridget McIntyre, and Maya Collins. So here's Vig. Running the offense for the Butte Roadrunners. Again, 17 and one on the season. The current number one ranked team in the state of California. And it's a jump ball, possession arrow in favor of the Pirates. A great coverage there by the Pirates. Force that jump ball, get the ball back. So bringing it up is Haley Estrada, the freshman from Rancho Cucamonga. Now they get a wide open three for Ariola. Her three pointer is long. She hit the first three pointer of the game. Nice box out there, too, by Marroquin to prevent McIntyre from trying to save that ball from going out of bounds. And just off the backside of the rim there, denies on a three point shot. So on the floor for the Butte Roadrunners is Campbell Vig, Morgan Trigario, Aubrey Prunty, Madeline Bassett, and Reagan Marroquin. Here's a three-point attempt by Bassett. This one's long, too strong on it. And there is the horn marking the end of the first quarter. We can all catch a breath here as the Roadrunners have a 27 to 21 lead over Orange Coast. A reminder, you are tuning in to the Okawa Classic here on sportsnetusa.net. I'm Noah Alvarez, thanks for tuning in. Wherever you may be tuning in from, this is day two of the Okawa Classic. And let's recap some of the games from earlier today. San Bernardino Valley came out victorious in game number one by a score of 89 to 49. If you were tuning into the broadcast yesterday between ELAC and Palomar, 
LA Southwest is rebooting their program after going dormant for a few years. So they only have five players on the roster. They were able to get a win yesterday against Oxnard, however, came up short against San Bernardino Valley today. In game number two, it was Golden West putting up a 100 whopper, 102 to 56 over Oxnard College. I think that's the first time we've seen that here at Akawa Classic. Or a 100 point game, yeah, because I, we, like we saw you know, Butte play yesterday and they're definitely capable of putting up 100 points in a game. I think they finished maybe just like four points shy of that, but like, like it was still an impressive, like an impressive offensive demonstration by Butte yesterday. And of course, you know, like by the teams here today who put up, you know, that 100 <laughs> plus points. Like, like it, it was still kind of jaw dropping to actually see. And I kind of felt bad for Oxnard a little bit, but you know, putting up 50 points against a team like that is still very, you know, impressive. Like that's nothing to be taken away from. Correct, I'm sure there's a lot of positives that the coach is going over as here's Bassett who puts a move down, spins to her left and there's another jump ball. We've already seen four of those. Coach Doucette asking for a three second offensive lane violation. We have yet to see one be called here in the last two days at the Okawa Classic. And in game number three of today, Moore Park defeated Elac 65 to 47. Some of you guys are probably tuning into that one. As Haley Estrada brings it up. McIntyre now has it, gets a screen from Lopez. Lopez now has it on the slash to her right. They're gonna call an offensive foul. Mm, I don't know. The tough one is it looks like Bruce Brissette was moving from right to left. Back into the game for the Roadrunners is Jocelyn Medina and Sarah Tate. They get into their play set here. Now Vig has it on the left side. Chagario trying to lose her defender. It's Estrada guarding her tightly. And they're gonna call a traveling violation on the Roadrunners. Still a 27 to 21 game. Just over nine minutes left to go here in the second quarter. Lopez thought about the three-pointer, now drives baseline, quickly doubled. You see the swarming defense there by the Roadrunners. Maya Collins now swings it out to McIntyre. McIntyre, a sophomore, bounces this one off of her foot. Collins wanted to take the three, now drives middle. Dishes it back out to Estrada. Estrada has to take a tough contested two, misses the rim. And now it's a turnover as nice job there by Ariola to take that one away from V. Good Ariola just gave Vig the body a little bit there. Massive size differential between Vig there. A good positioning there by Ariola. 12 seconds left on the shot clock for the Pirates as Collins had a fight to get that one. Maybe fight a little too much as they call a foul on Sarah Tate. As it was Amira Leonard who made the call. It'll be J.R. Castro, Janae Urban, and Amira Leonard, the three referees in tonight's game. Ashari Cassell checking back into the game, the freshman from Orange Lutheran High School. McIntyre has it now on the right wing. 20 seconds left on the shot clock as it did reset. McIntyre with an aggressive drive and it bounces off her leg. Good hands there by Tregario. Now it looks like they switch up their defensive plan. They're not going with the full court trap that we saw a lot in the first quarter as Vig dribbles it up. Looks like they're gonna sink back into a man-to-man -man defense. Medina tried to get it down low to her teammate, Bassett. And you hear Coach Newton not too pleased with that last possession. We've almost gone two minutes here now in the second quarter scoreless. This is kind of what I expected to see too. I stayed around and watched the Orange Coast Moore Park game. A lot of defense played in that one. Final score is 51 to 50. As both these teams will play very stout defense. Some of the best basketball you'll see here in the 3C2A. And they swing it out to Lopez. Lopez takes another three. Why not? She's already knocked down two. However, comes up short on this one. Two on one fast break. It's ahead to Tate, and Tate converts. Great extra passer by V. She had an opening all herself, but saw the opening to her teammate instead, took advantage. And it breaks a two and a half minute scoring drought by both these teams. 
as it looks like they're going with the zone and they really collapsed on the lane. Now it's V going the other way. And Ariola fouls V. Wow, that got everyone in the crowd hyped that's here rooting for Butte. They have a pretty good fan showcase, I guess you could say. Traveling all the way from Northern California. And a chance to extend their lead to 11. On the season, she's a 58% free throw shooter and she gets this one to go. She capitalizes on the three point opportunity. 32 to 21 is the score, just over seven minutes left to go. As Orange Coast gets into their play set, Lopez, she's been the real initiator. Aggressive, trying to score the ball. She converts on the mid-range bunny. 32 to 23 now is the score as the Pirates trail by nine. Strong, aggressive drive there by Medina. Brings it back to an 11 point game. Almost looks like they're going with the 1-3-1 one, one zone as they really collapse when a player for Orange Coast has it on one wing or the other. Four players have their attention to them, overloading one side of the defense. As Orange Coast hasn't quite yet cracked the code to the Roadrunners' aggressive defense. Now it's Bassett driving on Lopez and goes all the way with their right. Has a little celebration to show too with their bench. And now it's a 13 point lead for the Roadrunners. Yeah, Pirates kind of got lucky there as Bassett took a little shot to the face, so a little no call foul. Rebound chased down by Dreesen. That's a fresh 30 for the Pirates. Again, see here as Lopez has it, four Roadrunners turn their attention to her as they overload that one side, but it gives an opportunity for Dreesen to grab an offensive board. A quick jump ball called there, and it's in favor of the Roadrunners. So McKenna Ching gonna check into the game for Sabrina. No, checking in for Alyssa Dreesen. One thing that I've noticed so far tonight is something that's in contrast to what I noticed yesterday. You know, Butte in yesterday's game against Amber Dino, they were subbing out five players at a time, like basically doing whole lineup changes. And I think with an opponent like San Bernardino, you could do that. With a, an opponent like the Pirates here tonight, it's not something you can get away with. Good interception there by Ching, but yes, a much tougher opponent, maybe experimenting, trying to get that second unit developed. You see it there, they leave Maya. Open down low, she kicks it back to Ostrada. They swing the ball well. Cassell now has it, drives the middle, draws contact, and it looked like Prunty went straight up. However, they're gonna call a foul on her. So it'll be the first time we see Cassell go to the line. The freshman shooting 75% from the free throw line on the season. Brings the score now to 36 to 24. Just over five minutes left to go here in the second quarter. It's day two of the Okawa Classic. Again, thanks for tuning in wherever you may be tuning in from. And whether you're tuning in live or watching the replay on YouTube, be sure to like, subscribe, and follow Sportsnet USA 1 on YouTube if you love 3C2A sports. As there's an offensive rebound. So second chance opportunity for the Roadrunners. They're heading from light left to right, running their motion offense. Tate now has the ball on the right side. Guarded by Collins. Hands it off to Prunty. Prunty with the mid-range jumper. No good, but a second offensive rebound. More swinging of the ball. A lot of speed on the floor for the Roadrunners and they use that speed to their advantage. It ends up with V getting a nice, easy layup. Yeah, v just has a very smooth touch on that layup. So again, now Cassell having trouble with this zone. Collins spins to her right and gets a nice and one opportunity. She was able to draw the contact and finish. Checking back into the game is Madeline Bissett and Morgan Trigario. And 
And checking in back in for the Pirates is Bridget McIntyre. So McIntyre is on the floor with Maya Collins, Ashari Cassell, McKenna Ching, and Haley Estrada. Free throw is no good. Fight for the loose ball between Cassell and Prunty. Jump ball again. That's what, eight or nine jump balls we've seen? It, cer it certainly seems like it. I mean, like, I know we don't have, uh, I don't believe there's a stat, you know, track for that, <laughs> but I, I'm sure it'll be reflected in the actual, like, you know, play-by-play -play box score. But these two teams playing like it's at the end of March, playing like there's a state championship on the line, which you love to see, especially here in late December as both teams get prepared for conference play. Nice spin move there by Collins, but she leaves it short. Good hustle there by Ching. Collins gets her miss. Back out to McIntyre. McIntyre hurls one up. McIntyre. And it's a three-pointer from the left wing with a nice, easy triple. Cuts the deficit to eight now. As Marroquin now into the game. Player hit the deck. I believe that was Prunty, but she's back up. 17 seconds left on the shot clock. Good screen there by Prunty. Is it freed up? Vig, however, she came up short with the left hand. Now McIntyre pushing the tempo. Goes baseline. Dumps it off to Collins. Collins comes up short, gets her own miss. Again, a lot of offensive rebound in those last two possessions for the Pirates. Out hustling and out working the Roadrunners here. Halfway through the second quarter. It's been a game of runs. Things were all tied up at 17 apiece. And then the Roadrunners took a 13 point lead. Now it's trimmed down to five. Another loose ball, another jump ball. Possession arrow in favor of Butte this time. And I believe it's a fresh 30 seconds for the Roadrunners. 3.15 left to go here in the second quarter. Nice inbound play as they get it to Bassett. However, Bassett's layup comes up short. Cassell now relaying to the offense what their play set is going to be. This three-pointer by Estrada is short. Vig now pushing the tempo. They have a four on two opportunity. Vig spins, dumps it off to Bassett. Wow, that was a nice pass and dish there by the point guard. You gotta take a look at that again as we do a quick little touch of the replay. Ooh. Nice little spin move and pass from Vig. Put her in the spin cycle. So it looks like a 3 2 zone, almost, or a 2 2 1, and it's a traveling on Ching. Took a couple steps before she put that first pound dribble on the ground. Two more substitutions to tell you about. As Giselle Rodriguez will check back into the game for the Roadrunners as well as Jocelyn Medina. Sabrina Lopez checked back into the game as well as Alyssa Dreesen for the Pirates. This one swiped away by Cassell, momentarily lost and it's in possession now of the Pirates. Good aggressive hands there. A good time to use the word handsy. That coach, or that uh, coach, but Serwin says that we love to use. <laughs> Almost called him Coach Serwin. A apparently I like to use it. I haven't said it. <laughs> well, I guess I said it during football. I don't recall saying it all during basketball this season. Lopez now has it. On the left elbow, drives baseline. Kicks it out to Estrada. Estrada three from the far corner. No good. Lopez grabs the rebound. Estrada now kicks it out. She spins to the right. This one is short. Teardrop, no good. Just under two minutes left to play here in the second quarter. 40 to 32 is the score in favor of Butte. Medina gets a screen by Bassett, another screen. Now she has a mismatch as Dreesen guarding her. Running that motion offense that we saw Palomar run so effectively yesterday against Elac. Medina nearly loses her dribble. Five seconds left on the shot clock. Bassett's gonna be forced to foot someone up with two seconds left. And the prayer is no good as I missed the rim. And it's a shot clock violation. You're seeing some energy brought here by Sammy Doucette, the fifth year head coach. It's a relatively young coaching staff. Something you'd like to see though here at this level. Both her, Henry Nguyen and Sarah Lee some of the younger coaches on the Orange Coast staff as Lopez is gonna be forced to kick this one out. Maybe the refs missed a traveling violation there. Estrada hoist up the three. This one no good. Looks like they're gonna call a foul on the rebound. Good call there by J.R. Castro 
as Bassett was boxing out a little too aggressively on Lopez. Lopez had really good positioning down low. We've seen that time and time again, the sophomore from Etiwanda High School. Making the bigs for Butte College work as there's a nice stop and go move there by McIntyre. However, her pass was deflected out of bounds. Still an eight point deficit for Orange Coast. A minute 02 left to go in the quarter. Two substitutions to tell you about for Butte as Campbell Vig and Shade Sadika. The first time we're seeing Sadika tonight. Checking into the game, wearing number 21. He'll probably play for the final minute as this one's tipped out of bounds by Rodriguez. Good hands there and anticipation. She's guarding Sabrina Lopez, so she'll have to be very active on the defensive side. Now it's Cassell inbounding the ball. 20 seconds left on the shot clock, 58 on the game clock. Cassell with the runner, too strong off the backboard, but it's tipped out instead of grabbed by Butte. And it's another possession for Orange Coast. About a 16 second differential between game clock and shot clock. Cassell's gonna go right, not using the screen. Good pivot foot there as she was able to stop, readjust herself and create a window to shoot that short range jumper. 40 to 34 is the score. Feig now has it, swings it over to Bassett. Bassett tries to dish it to Rodriguez. Looked like Rodriguez was trying to move towards the middle instead of staying on the baseline. And it's a turnover for the Roadrunners. 21 seconds left here in the second quarter. Cassell gets the play call here from Sammy Doucette, the head coach. They immediately trap. She gets it over to McIntyre. McIntyre takes the mid-range. This one was halfway down, but it rims out. And this is going to be out of bounds. That one nearly came for the equipment. We were both ready, though, yeah. to block that one out. I'm sure Ed Ford would love to see that. I'll have to tell you a funny soccer laptop story <laughs> from back in the day. I guess not so funny I, to Ed I, Ford. I know what happened. It's, it's, it's a little <laughs> funny to me. Four seconds left now. Cassell has it. She gets a screen. Takes a mid-range jumper from the right elbow at the buzzer. So count it as two points for the Pirates at the end of the quarter. Your score at the end of the first half, 40 to 36. Nice job by Albert to provide us that replay. And good patience there, I guess you could say, by Ashara Cassell. She got that a screen. Instead of driving right away, she knew how much time was on the clock. She was patient, set up the step back, and she converts on the two-pointer. It was an exciting first half in action. We'll take a quick break here as we'll bring you some stats for the first half of action in about 12 or so minutes and be ready for the second half of action. Yeah, so we'll be back. Stay tuned. You're watching the Okawa Classic right here on Sportsnet, USA.net. Back here at the e Arena, it's the Okawa Classic, day two, and it's game number four. As we have a doozy for y'all, it's Butte College, who has a 40 to 36 lead over Orange Coast. It's a rematch of the state championship game last season, and the Roadrunners coming out with a vengeance here tonight. Let's go into some of the stats for both these teams as you have a box score. Leading the charge for the Roadrunners, well, there's a few different players I'm going to highlight as a lot of them are starters. Four of the five starters have turned out great outputs here in the first half. Jocelyn Medina has nine points and six rebounds. Tied with for second in scoring is Morgan Trigario and Sarah Tate. Both have eight apiece. And Campbell Vig has seven points, but also has four assists, setting up her teammates very nicely and efficiently on the offense. Doing a nice job, too, on getting out on fast break. As a team, the Roadrunners are shooting 56% from the field. So they're doing a nice job of getting some really good looks. A lot of times, too, they've broken that full court trap that the Pirates turned early on in the first quarter. And for Orange Coast, well, they've been led by Ashari Cassell, the freshman from Orange Lutheran High School. She leads the team with 13 points. Also, a big player for the Pirates offense has been Sabrina Lopez. She only has nine points, but she has four offensive rebounds, seven rebounds total. And as a team, the Pirates are shooting 32%, so the Roadrunners defense doing a better job of really limiting the lanes and opportunities for this Pirates offense. Neither team shoots a lot of three-pointers. Pirates have shot seven total, only made two. 
And the Roadrunners have shot two, only made one. So we're about ready here for the third quarter of action. Again, two top five teams here in the state of California as McIntyre knocks in a three, just as I was saying, as both these teams don't attempt a lot of threes here in the first half. It's now a one-point deficit for Orange Coast. As we'll get you the five on the floor for both these teams. The Roadrunners are heading from right to left now. They're in their black uniforms with the gold letters and numbers. It's Vig who has the ball. She's on the floor with Medina who takes the three from the right wing, misses everything. Tate's there for the rebound. Tate, Bassett, and Tregario. And for the Pirates, it's McIntyre, Cassell, Estrada, Dreesen, and Lopez. McIntyre guarded very tightly by Tregario. Here's a three-pointer by Cassell. This one's strong. Dreesen skies for the rebound. And they have a fresh 30-second shot clock to work with. 8.50 left to go here in the third quarter. 42 to 39 is the score. As here's a three-pointer by Lopez. Not the best look there for the Pirates. And looked like Cassell was being a little too handsy there deep in the backcourt. Kind of a sloppy start here to the second half for Orange Coast. Orange Coast doing a nice job of getting offensive boards here in this first half. Let's see if that trend can comparison to just six for the Butte Roadrunners. I'm sure that was a point of emphasis for head coach Tyler Newton during his halftime speech as Chigario takes a deep three. This one nearly went down, and it's a loose ball foul on Dreesen, the freshman from Martin Luther King High School out in Riverside. They clean up the wet spot on the ground. It was Bassett who hit the ground hard. McIntyre doing their job there and wiping down. That's the one humbling thing here at the community college level. You don't have a bunch of staff workers at each college to wipe the floors down and make things nice and shiny, wipe off the sweat when a player falls down on the ground like that. 7.30 left to go here in the third. This three-pointer is long. And they're going to call a foul on the rebound as Bassett trying to plead her case to Coach Newton, saying that she didn't push anybody. But it was J.R. Castro who made the call here on the left baseline. Pirates are heading from left to right. Cassell now has the ball. 21 seconds left on the shot clock. Lopez trying to get it down low to Dreesen. Dreesen spins to her left. She gets tied up with Medina. And that's a shot. No, that's a jump ball and will be in possession of the Roadrunners. So the Pirates have had four trips here in the second half, gone 0 for 4 in capitalizing and coming away with some points. Score is still 44 to 39. Excuse me, they did knock down a three-pointer on their very first possession, but since then, so one of five in their possessions here to start the second half. But they get a good turnover here, opportunity for McIntyre and the Pirates. Cassell dumps it off for Lopez. Lopez lets it fly. She comes up short, and ahead of the pack is Tate. Tate has a step on Lopez, misses the layup, and Cassell saves it from going out of bounds. Here's that fast play that we've seen for much of the first quarter. As the Pirates now slow things down just a bit, Estrada tried to throw it to a cutting Lopez. Again, Cassell saves it from going out of bounds. Great hustle by her. She runs into the stands, back onto defense. Lopez tried to draw a charge. Not enough contact was made there. And it's back to a seven point lead for the Roadrunners. Chance to, for the players to catch their breath, for all, us to catch our breath. As the, is it, there is a timeout called on the floor by head coach Sammy Doucette. With how fast this game has really been going, it feels like this is the first timeout that's actually been taken. Yeah, <laughs> it's the first timeout in a while. I don't think that second quarter had a whole lot of time stoppage. But it's a 46 to 39 game. Again, you're tuned in to the Okawa Classic, the 12th annual Okawa Classic here on SportsNetUSA.net. I'm Noah Alvarez, joined by Albert Robles. Thanks for tuning in wherever you may be tuning in from. Hey, interesting stat as um, we mentioned earlier in the broadcast that Golden West put up the first 100 point game that we've seen on the season. 
Will, Corey Nalen, a friend of the sportsnetusa.net, I guess you could say a colleague as well, right? He went ahead and shot me a text saying that both Butte and Orange Coast scored 100 previously in this season. Butte put up 107 on Napa Valley earlier, and Orange Coast scored 110 on Rio Hondo. So three teams have scored 100 plus points on the season. We have two of them here playing against one another. Again, thanks to Corey Nalen for the tidbit as we're now ready to resume play. 6-12 left to go in the third quarter. McIntyre still on the floor with Dreesen. Collins checked back into the game as McIntyre hoist up a three. She comes up short. Cassell also on the floor with Estrada. That's the five on the floor for the Pirates. It's a fast break opportunity. Hard contact there and they call a foul. A offensive foul. Not too sure about that one as I can empathize with Coach Newton's frustration there as it looked like Estrada was moving from right to left. It was an aggressive drive there by Medina. However, when a player is moving side to side on defense, usually they call that a block, not a charge. Arguably one of the tougher calls to make in all of sports, if you think about all of officiating and the tough calls that they have to make. Maybe an offensive or defensive pass interference is one of the tougher ones as Cassell going to her left, connects on the short range jumper. It's a five point game and this one's blocked. Sent out of bounds by Dreesen, the six foot one freshman from MLK High School. Showing why she belongs as one of the top post players here in the state of California. Now Bassett gets it. And it's an immediate jump ball. Possession arrow in favor of Orange Coast. Looked like Cassell tripped up, either rolled her ankle or she just slipped on a wet spot. As her and her teammate McIntyre wiping the wetness off the floor. 5.22 left to go here in the third quarter. Again, you're tuning into the Okawa Classic here on SportsNetUSA.net. Thanks for tuning in wherever you may be tuning in from. Two top five teams here in the 3C2A is Cassell's jumper, no good. Dreesen tried to poke that one away, but it's in possession of the Roadrunners, and they use their speed effectively to get out in transition. Now here's Medina, who puts it on the floor, goes right, and stays with the right hand as she converts on the two. And she held up at the top of the key as if she's going to go for a three, quickly read the actual defense, drove it in, put it up for two. Now Dreesen has it and the high post. Loses the dribble momentarily, swings it to a wide open Estrada. And since that first three pointer of the game that she connected on, she's been 0 for 4 since. So she has struggled to get things going from beyond the arc after a quick start. Substitution for the game is Giselle Rodriguez coming in for the Roadrunners as Madeline Bassett checking out. Haley Estrada going to check in for the Pirates as Maya Collins checking back out. So it looks like the Pirates are trying to match the speed. A little bit of a small ball being played by both teams here. Some high level basketball being played here tonight at the e Arena. As Medina now has it. Rodriguez over on the right wing, guarded by Dreesen. Dreesen with the long left hand gets a block. And now going the other way is Estrada. 4.11 left to go here in the third. Cross court pass. Stops on the dime. Mid range jumper gets it to go. Nice move there by Ariola. Yeah, great points there in transition for the OCC Pirates. Oh, and they call an offensive foul. Another tough call there. Again, Coach Newton is pleading his case to all three referees saying that the defender from the Pirates was moving side to side on a fast break. I got a message from Mr. Ed Ford a moment ago saying that that was a blatant charge, referring to an earlier call. <laughs> so uh, Ed Ford, I believe now you finally get your way and that uh, a charging call was actually made. A blatant charge indeed. Five point game, Roadrunners have a five point lead over the Pirates. 3.45. Left to go in the third quarter. Ariola now has the ball, gets a screen from Dracine. A lot of movement on the perimeter as Cassell now drives, tries to dish it down low to Dreesen. 
Good anticipation there by Vig. V gets this poked away by McIntyre, but will remain in possession of the Roadrunners. Butte, 17 and one on the season. Orange Coast, 10 and two. Both these teams faced one another in the state championship just a year ago, less than eight months ago. As Vig swings it over to Medina, who's guarded by Ariola. Ariola got a little handsy, and it's a three-point opportunity for Medina. And she had a strong move to the basket. Third personal foul on Ariola. So nice aggressive move there by Medina, who capitalizes on the three point opportunity. She just barreled her way through. 51 to 43 is the score. Butte leads now by eight. Dreesen sets the screen, Cassell goes the other way. Leaves it off for Estrada. Very quick movement we're seeing here by Orange Coast and McIntyre is fired on the three-pointer. They're gonna call a foul on Morgan Chigario. It's not gonna be on the shot, no it is gonna be on the shot. So it'll be three free throws for McIntyre and if, well no one was streaming this one but last night Last night it was a game between Orange Coast and Moore Park as Moore Park had a three point lead. <laughs> as Moore Park had a three point lead and McIntyre was fouled in the last second of the game. Now she missed the first free throw, so she went on to make the next two and that's how Orange Coast lost by a score of 51 to 50. But if she had hit all three pointers, that game would have gone to overtime. And that was, again, day one of the Okawa Classic. So Orange Coast has a little bit more incentive to win tonight after losing last night. As this three pointer is good by Medina. Very expressive after the three point conversion for a team. Back to an eight point lead for the Roadrunners. Feels like every time the Pirates bring within five or six, the Rodaners are able to respond with a big shot of their own. They're trying to get it down low to Dreesen. She comes out now and sets the screen for Estrada. Estrada slithers her way in, kicks it out to Areola, strong on her three-pointer. She chases down their long rebound. However, it's turned over, and now Vig one-on-one with McIntyre. McIntyre, hands up, but Vig steps through. Nice Euro step for the freshman point guard. Now Areola drives left hard. Got this one blocked by Rodriguez. Roadrunners putting a lot of speed on the court, and this one's stolen by Estrada. Rodriguez wasn't aware of who was behind her. 138 left to go here in the third. 10 point deficit for the Pirates as they start chucking up some threes. There's a nice follow and a teardrop by Haley Estrada. One twenty left to go here in the third quarter. They dump it off to Tate, who's being guarded by Cassell. As now Cassell hits the floor. I believe they're gonna call a foul on her. Looked like a little bit of a touch foul there as Tate was going for the ball as it was momentarily poked away. Tate is the bigger player, and Cassell definitely sold that one. Nonetheless, it'll end up Pirates ball. 56 to 48, just over a minute left to go in the game. Now McIntyre has it near the scores table. She gets a screen from Lopez who just checked into the game. Here's a long two pointer by Estrada. And she's been a big player off the bench. Now has 10 points in the evening. Vig pushing the tempo. 49 seconds left here in the third quarter. Fancy dribbling here by the freshman. Gets it over. Three pointer no good by Rodriguez. And they're gonna call a foul. A foul on Reagan Moroquin. So a lot of touch fouls down here on this left side of the court. Yes, we are talking about the touch fouls. 
<laughs> Coach Newton not too happy with the calls being made in the past couple minutes. So Cassell will go to the line for two free throws. This one's short, as some would say, and pick up basketball, ball don't lie. Cassell is a 75% free throw shooter on the season. And she's 0 for 2 on the trip. So maybe the basketball gods were in favor of Tyler Newton as Vig dumps it off for a teammate. This one is short, is Marroquin, and this one bounces off the foot of Marroquin. And it'll be possession of the Pirates. 28 seconds left, so they could settle for the last shot of the quarter. V guarding Cassell as she dribbles it up. Looks like the Pirates are going to wait a few seconds before they move. Now Cassell drives hard to the right. No foul called there. Ball momentarily poked away by Estrada. Eight seconds left to go on the game clock. Looks like the ball went into the corner, but I don't think, oh, okay, someone did go get it. I thought someone was waiting. I thought all the players here were waiting for someone to get the ball, but it was Prunty who went to go grab the ball. And there's a trip there of Cassell. I don't think anyone touched her. Just lost her footing, one, and there's the horn. It's a nice defensive stand in the final possession. However, the Pirates weren't able to get an offensive possession in the final second. At the end of three quarters, Butte has a 56 to 50 lead over Orange Coast Pirates. Again, thanks for tuning in to the Okawa Classic here on SportsNetUSA.net. I'm Noah Alvarez, joined by Albert Robles. We had Serwin D. Haynes earlier, but he had to take off. Missing a really good game now. He's got other SID duties to attend to. But of course, he's got the link to the stream. He's able to watch, keep track. Yes, again, big shout out to Serwin Haynes, who was on the broadcast in the game before between Moore Park and Elac. It's been an exciting matchup here tonight. Again, two top teams here in the 3C2A. Butte, 17 and one on the season. Their only loss came against Mount Sac. That's a team that Serwin D. Haynes and Coach Turner are gonna be very familiar with as they're in the SEC North Conference. So when they begin conference play, they'll have to deal with the Mount Sac Mounties. And for the Orange Coast Pirates, they're 10 and two on their season. One of those losses came last night as they fell to Moore Park College here on day one of the Okawa Classic. Their previous loss was back on December 8th as they lost to Fresno City back at the Fresno City College Tournament. It was a 76 to 68 final. They lost to Moore Park last night, 51 to 50. And as I mentioned, McIntyre went to the line with less than a second left on the game clock. Had a chance to tie things up if she knocked in all three free throws. However, she only made two. And so Orange Coast fell by a score of 51 to 50. That was last night. Now back to our action tonight. One more quarter. As Vig being hounded on defense by Cassell. Now kicks it out to Rodriguez, who's guarded by Areola. Rodriguez with a tough move. And she shows the too small signal to Areola as it was a very nice finish there by the freshman guard. 58 to 50 is the score. Orange Coast passing the ball around a lot, but around the perimeter, haven't been able to attack the lane. Now here is Cassell slithering her way in. She zigged, then she zagged, and she gets the floater to go. Tate now has it on the right side, gets it to Medina. Medina thought about the three-pointer. Ariola still guarding her tightly. This one hits the bottom of the backboard. Now Rodriguez hits the floor. Vig has it. She kicks it to Bassett. Bassett takes a long three-pointer from the top of the arc, and Cassell wrestles this one away for the Pirates. Lopez now has it, steps through and kicks it back out to Cassell. She's been the main ball handler here for the Pirates. Nice jump through step there, and she converts on the mid-range jumper. Fifty-eight to fifty-four is the score. Eight twenty left to go here in the fourth quarter. An exciting finish. This one is going to brew to be as Bassett 
Swings it over to Vig. 12 seconds left on the shot clock. She's guarded by Lopez. Should be a mismatch as Vig uses her quickness, gives her some air space, and she hits on the short jumper. 60 to 54 is the call. Now Ariola. Looks like the Roadrunners are going back to that zone where they have all four players bring their attention when the player has it on the wing. Estrada misses a Cree three-pointer there. 60 to 54 is the score. Pirates trail by six. And Coach Newton calls a timeout. He's visibly frustrated at some of the calls that were made earlier in the afternoon. Or I guess evening. I don't know why I said afternoon. It is afternoon, but it's definitely the evening. It's been a long day. It's been a long day for us, not gonna lie. A lot of opportunity here as with 7.41 left to go, still plenty of time for the Pirates to mount some sort of comeback and they haven't really been able to get the game to within five since the first quarter. And if you're rooting for the Roadrunners, well, it's a chance for them to execute some half court offense, really eat some time off the clock and really try and slow things down so that the Pirates have less opportunities to come back in this game. Yeah, because like I think like the Pirates were within four at the, at the end of the half. Quickly got within one with that first three-point shot, you know, to start off the second half, and then quickly fell away. They're still down by six, still very much within this game. But Butte, they know what happened in the championship game. They're looking to make a statement here tonight. Again, this is a rematch of the state championship last season, just a season ago as I'm sure there's still some sour feelings on the Butte sideline as they fell short to Orange Coast College. Final score in that one was 78 to 71. 60 to 54 is the current score here as this one is a hard foul. I believe they're gonna call that on Estrada. No, they're gonna call that on Sabrina Lopez. So it'll be Madeline Bassett going to the line for two free throws. The third personal foul on Lopez. First free throw by Bassett is no good on the season. She's shooting 75% as a team. They're shooting 69% from the free throw line. Second free throw is good. So it's back to a seven point lead for the Butte Roadrunners. 7.30 left to go here in the final quarter. Day two of the Okawa Classic. Thanks for tuning in wherever you may be tuning in from. Pirates get into their motion offense. McIntyre now dishes it down low to Lopez. Lopez can't get the first one to go. She's too strong on the putback. And it's Vig who hawks down the rebound. It's the freshman guard from Pierce High School putting on quite a display here at the Okawa Classic. Drives past Estrada, uses her speed, and what great acceleration as she was able to convert on a big two-pointer there. Vig has such, such great spatial awareness and bodily control to even put up that shot, which was so highly contested. There's a good look there by Cassell. Now Cassell gets hit with the foul. They're gonna call it traveling, wow. So the call was made by Janae Urban over on the far sideline. There's a good opportunity on the last possession for the Pirates, so it's not like they've been short on getting good looks at the basket. However, they have been unable to capitalize on their opportunities. Ching checks into the game for Orange Coast. Cassell swings it to Estrada, who backs out now, takes a long three-pointer. This one's no good. Ching crashes in for the rebound. Cassell swings it. Estrada, now Areola from the far corner. This one's short. And they're gonna call a rebound, a foul on the rebound on Campbell V. That was aggressive rebound from Ching on the earlier possession. <laughs> Straight yeah. up bodied the Butte player out of bounds. And it's not a foul, it's just, hey, I'm bigger than you. Yes. Take it. Using that body to her advantage. Standing at six foot from Vista Marietta High School, but it's a turnover for the Pirates. Roadrunners going the other way with it. Just over six minutes left to go. A nine point lead as the number one team in the 3C2A taking on the number three team in the 3C2A. 
Ooh, Vig wanted to pass it to Medina. McIntyre was ready to jump that passing lane. Ariola nearly steals this one. However, it goes out of bounds on the Pirates. So it will remain in Roadrunner possession. Just under six minutes left to go here in the final quarter. Vig was held by Cassell, and wow, she hit the deck pretty hard. Seems like the intensity has picked up and the physicality brought to you by the Pirates defense has picked up a little bit too in this last quarter. Absolutely, it's getting far more aggressive and you, and you can absolutely expect it to be that way given just how close the score really is in actuality and just how good these two teams have actually performed here tonight. Nothing short of intense here for the entire four quarters. Medina now drives middle, kicks it out to Bassett. She had a wide open three. Now Medina chases down the long rebound and it's a fresh 30 for the Roadrunners. Tregario tries to blow past McIntyre. And now Ching loses her defender momentarily. However, unable to capitalize on the opportunity is V. Cassell. It's a screen from Ching. Steps through. Takes a small bump. And they're going to call a foul on Madeline Bassett. This is exactly what you want, too, if you're head coach Sammy Doucette for Orange Coast. A chance to trim the lead, but also no time coming off the clock when they take a free throw. First one is good by Cassell, freshman from Orange Lutheran High School. Two for two on the trip to the line. 5.17 left to go in the final quarter. It's a seven point game as the Roadrunners look to hang on. Hoping to advance to 18 and two. And Benge, their loss in the state finals last year. As there was a nice entry pass there to Morgan Chigario. Converts on the layup. Back to a nine point game. Cassell weaving her way through, leaves it short. And now this is a nice dump off for Dreesen, who gets the two with the left hand. Back to a seven point game as Tate now pushing the tempo. Bassett has another wide open three pointer. Not looking to chew any time off the clock there as it was a really quick shot. I'm sure that's something that Coach Newton will emphasize to her girls. Hey, Maddie, Maddie, on you have to play 65 to 58, seven point game. 4.30 left to go here in the final quarter. Cassell being guarded by Vig. Looks like the Orange Coast offense has gone rather stagnant. They dish it to Ching. Ching tries to go left. Backs down her defender, now faces up, fades away as she tries to hit the short range off the glass. No good. And outside of Cassell, they've really struggled to get some good offensive looks. Here's a three-pointer by Tregario. And there's a timeout called there by Doucette. Back to a 10-point lead for the Roadrunners. Just over four minutes left to go. A reminder, you are watching the Okawa Classic here on SportsnetUSA.net. Back here at the e Arena, 4.05 left to go here in the game. Butte has a 68 to 58 lead over Orange Coast, hoping to advance to 18 and one on the season. Cassell on the floor with Lopez, McIntyre, Ariola, and Dreesen, the starting five for the Pirates. They get down low to Dreesen. Dreesen tries to turn to her right. She knocks a Butte player down to the ground, but ahead of the pack is Tregario. Tregario leaves her layup short. McIntyre saves this one from going out of bounds. Now 3.38 left to go. Time slowly running out for Orange Coast. 
They need a bucket here. Don't need to start hoisting up threes just yet. They just need a good, efficient pressure, look. Pressure, pressure, pressure. And outside of Cassell, no other player has been able to do so for the Pirates. It's a turnover as Ariola was trying to swing it across to Cassell over on the left wing. A costly turnover at that Forest Doucette squad. Medina's on the floor with Tate, Vig, Bassett, and Tregario. So the starting five for both teams out there in the crunch time here in late in the fourth quarter, and it's Jocelyn Medina. The freshman from Pierce High School playing with a lot of swagger, playing on a big stage here at the Okawa Classic, but Sabrina Lopez responds with a three of her own, trims the lead back to 10. 71 to 61 is the score as you see the replay there. Nice stroke there by Lopez. She's been very active on the offensive boards. Here's another three-pointer by Medina as these teams trading three-pointers back and forth. Not what you want there if you're the Pirates. However, if you're Coach New and you're loving it, feeding off the energy. Cassell now tries to go left on Vig Lopez. They set a series of screens for McIntyre. Good defense here by Tregario. They swing it out to Cassell. Cassell back to McIntyre. McIntyre thought about the three. Now gets it to Dracine. McIntyre takes a three, three. She gets it to go. She got hit in the stomach too as she took it. As we'll have a nice replay of that. Big three pointer there by McIntyre. Four straight possessions, two by each team. And they've all been able to convert on clutch three pointers now as Medina goes to work on Areola. Spins right, loses her dribble, but it got knocked away. Now Tate slashes to the lane. She's not able to get it to go. A chance for Orange Coast to cut the lead to eight or seven. 1.30 left to go. Not a lot of urgency here by Orange Coast. Dreesen hands it off to Cassell. Clock keeps ticking. Now 12 seconds left on the shot clock. 1.18 left to go on the game clock. Cassell trying to get past Vig. Not a lot doing good defense here by Butte. Mid-range Bunny, no good on the bounce. Lopez fights for the loose ball, and it's going to be in possession now of Butte. So huge defensive stop there for the Roadrunners. Checking into the game now is Reagan Marroquin running number 10. And Ariola is going to sub out for Haley Estrada for Orange Coast. Just over a minute left to go. Still a 10-point game. Hard screen there by Bassett. They swing it out to Marroquin. Does a nice job of not taking an early three-pointer. Big now steps through Cassell. Good defense there by Orange Coast. Fight for the loose ball. And they were called an early jump ball as Estrada and Medina hit the deck. And it's a possession arrow in favor of Orange Coast. 47 seconds left now. So now it's the time for Orange Coast to start shooting up some threes. It has to be a quick three, too. And they got to play the foul game. It's the final quarter. Still no urgency as Coach Doucette urging to her team to have some sort of urgency. McIntyre tries to kick it out. This one's poked away. And there's a foul on the floor as Lopez wrestled down Bassett. And that's going to be a foul on Orange Coast. Is it a foul or a timeout? So it's a timeout call. A little surprised not to see a foul there. I thought it was a foul. However, I, I believe the timeout was probably called before a foul opportunity actually came into play. Because like you viewers might have seen it on your screen, but as as a 15 Medina was coming back and free, it was like not a foul, it was a timeout. Yes. Like, like she like she was very much involved in the play. She knew what was happening the entire time. It was a bang bang play after the errant pass there by McIntyre. She tried to kick it out to her teammate Estrada. Now with less than 30 seconds left, you have to play the foul game. They're probably going to go for one or two steal attempts, but then you have to foul, and hopefully you get into the hands of one of the worst free throw shooters for Butte College, but now you're hoping for a miracle as they trail by 10 points with less than 30 seconds left to go here in the game. It's been an intense game thus far, and despite the 10-point lead, it feels like it's been a lot closer for much of this game. Absolutely. 
Again, it was a rematch of the state championship game last season. And it definitely lived up to the hype here, playing with great intensity late in December. Medina will inbound. Tate gets this one poked away. McIntyre now has it. Crosses half court, dumps it down low to Lopez with the left hand. Oh, she's strong. And that might be the dagger, a self-imposed dagger as she missed the layup. And it's a foul called on McIntyre. 20 seconds left in the game. It was a nice defensive stand there on the inbounds. They were able to poke that ball away from Tate. They had a three on two fast break, just what you asked for if you're head coach Sammy Doucette. However, Lopez missed the layup with the left hand. You know, you know, it's not over till the fat lady sings, obviously, but with 20 seconds left, down only by two 10, timeouts. It's down by 10. It's looking thin. It, it, it is a tall, tall order. Butte, you know, like despite the closest and really, you know, great offensive showing by both teams, Butte has really been in control of this game all evening. The only time that they did not lead was in the first quarter when they when they were tied 17-17. Since that moment, they've never not had the lead in this game. So it'll be Maya Collins who fouls Reagan Marroquin. Not in the penalty just yet. They have 14 fouls, so they'll have to foul once more in order to stop the clock and force the Roadrunners to go to the line. Medina will inbound the ball on the floor as Tate, Marroquin, Vig, and Bassett as this time is Tregario. So Tregario was on the floor. She gets fouled by Collins. With 18 seconds left, Orange Coast is now hoping for some missed free throws. We have a good shot here of Coach Newton talking with Jocelyn Medina. The freshman guard had a very big game tonight coming out of Pierce High School. Missed the first one, so just what Orange Coast needs. Again, still a 10 point lead for the Roadrunners. Second free throw is good, so one for two on the trip. And Doucette is going to take a timeout. It'll be a full timeout, says J.R. Castro the head referee in tonight's game. Again, thanks for tuning in to the Okawa Classic here on SportsnetUSA.net. And while you're at it, if you like basketball, football, baseball, soccer, any sport here at the 3C2A level, be sure to subscribe to the YouTube channel here on SportsnetUSA.net. Absolutely, we cover numerous ELAC sports, specifically uh, football, men's basketball, do a little water polo and volleyball. You can hear yours truly, uh, yes. specifically on those last two sports. We also cover Cypress and Cerritos College Softball. Very active in the Orange Empire Conference for those two fantastic sports and those two great teams who always enjoy facing off each other. I know uh, Ed Ford, Mark Pavlovich enjoy you know, covering those games, talking to those uh, coaches over there at those two fine schools. Also do a little... Uh, a little Cypress basketball from time to time. Mm -hmm. I believe Cerritos basketball too. Cypress soccer we of course covered this year. I know we do a lot of Cypress sports. And, both men and women's. A lot of Fullerton college sports as well. As it'll be Collins Switch. to inbound the ball. 18 seconds left on the clock. She gets it to Areola. Swings it out to McIntyre. McIntyre knocks the three in from the corner. And with 14 seconds left, she's trimmed the lead back down to eight. So again, it's a tall order, but everything is possible. Anything is possible, as Kevin Garnett once said. 75 to 67 is the score. Again, thanks for tuning in to the Okawa Classic here on SportsNetUSA.net. In the latest rankings, Butte was ranked number one. Orange Coast was ranked number three. However, they did lose to Moore Park last night. And from the looks of it, might fall to Butte College tonight. So with those two losses, granted, those are two top seven ranked teams. You would argue maybe they fall, but not a whole lot. It shouldn't hurt them too much, like in their overall rankings. Yes, I think they'll fall, if anything, to five or six. But I can't imagine them dropping out of the top seven. No. Because they still operate as a top seven program. They went toe-to-toe -to -toe with, with the number with, one. With a number one team. Yes. 
And that's where these tournaments or these classics and just these different showcases here in the preseason are a really good opportunity for different programs, especially the top programs and programs who have the aspirations of winning a state championship or at least competing for one where they stack up against other top competition. And of course, you know, this is, you know, a little bit of a proverbial rematch of the state championship from last season, but it could also be a preview of things to come like, yes. like in this season's playoffs. You know, these two teams could very well meet again in the championship. That's how good they are. Yes. Butte uses a lot of speed. Very athletic group here at our four coach, Tyler Newton. And Orange Coast has a lot of height, a lot of good size, a lot of good persistency. They have two really good guards in Cassell and McIntyre. They also like to out-hustle and outwork their opponents for offensive rebound opportunities, as we saw there with Sabrina Lopez for much of the first half. 12 seconds left on the game clock. It's back to a nine-point lead. Cassell with nine seconds now. Drives, looking to get something soon. Four, three, two. There's the final horn as Cassell's last jumper is short. You see the expression on Butte's players' faces. And yes, it's not a total vengeance of their loss back in the state championship just this past spring. However, it has to feel good to beat a team that beat you only eight months ago. Absolutely, like a like, little, little bit of revenge, so to speak, but also just like, you know, watch out. It could be us this year. Could be us, could be them, could be you watching 3C2A Sports here on SportsNetUSA.net as that'll do it here for day two of the Okawa Classic. The Butte Roadrunners come out victorious by a final score of 76 to 67. Again, thanks for tuning in wherever you may be tuning in from. And if you only missed, let's say caught a, a portion of the broadcast, well, you can always go back and watch the whole thing over on YouTube. Again, that's sportsnetusa.net. And while you're at it, be sure to subscribe. For Albert Robles, Serwin D. Haynes, Ed Ford, Corey Nayland, and everyone else at SportsNetUSA.net, I'm Noah Alvarez signing off. We'll catch you guys next time.